So now that we have an understanding of the unit test module in the Python standard library, we're going to move on in this video and we're going to start considering Django testing functionality. Now we're going to start by creating a Django project and we're going to look at some of the out of the box features of Django for testing. Now in the last video we had two files here and we were invoking the unit test module in order to run those files on the command line, as you can see in the integrated terminal on VS Code. Now what we're going to do to start with here is create a Python virtual environment. So we're going to invoke the venv module and you can do that with python 3 m venv and then we're going to give our virtual environment directory a name and I'm going to call this venv testing. Now you'll notice a few things if you do this in VS Code, you get this pop-up where it notices that a new environment has been created and you can select that as the workplace folder. And notice as well we have a directory here that contains some subdirectories and within the bin directory we have the Python executable for this virtual environment. Now you can activate the virtual environment on Mac and Linux by using the source command and we just need to pass a reference to that binary directory so it's venv testing slash bin and then within there there is an activate script. Now obviously we're going to use Django in this series so once we've activated the virtual environment what you can do is run the pip install Django command and that's going to install Django into the virtual environment. In this case it's Django version 5.1.2 but most of the concepts, potentially all of them, are going to be applicable to previous versions of Django as well. So once Django is installed, what we can do here is run a command called Django admin, and we can actually start our project now using the start project command. And I'm just going to give this project a name of testing project, and that's going to create that directory here within the sidebar. Now within that directory we have a manage.py file and a Django project directory here. We can actually cd in here and we can start running commands using the manage.py file. So I'm going to cd into testing project and then within there we can create an application. So python manage.py start app is the command to create an application and that's where we're going to start creating some tests very soon in this series. Now I've cleared the terminal and we're going to create an application that has some models for products. So I'm going to create an application here within the Django project called products and that's going to create this directory on the left hand side. Once we have that we can go to our Django settings.py file and this is just setting up the project for us to work with in the rest of this series. Now we need to add the products application to the installed apps list that's in this file. So let's start by doing that. We're adding the products application to installed apps. And now we're ready to start creating an application using Django. Now if you're not familiar with these steps and you want to know more about Django, there's a great series on the Net Ninja on Django and you can check this out on YouTube. This is going to walk you through the core functionalities of Django with an application build at the end of the series and it's the introduction and setup parts that are applicable to what we've just done if you want to check those out. So let's get back to VS Code and now that we have a project set up, I want to note a couple of things about this project to start with and these are things that Django provides out of the box when it comes to testing. So notice that we created a products application within this Django project and if we look at the files that are created by Django when you actually create an application, you can see that one of them is called tests.py. Now for simple applications, this might be all you need. Your application might have a few tests and you can write them all within this tests.py file that's provided out of the box by Django. And notice the import at the top. From the Django.test module, we are importing the test case class. So that's the setup out of the box when you create a Django application within your project. You have a tests.py file that lives alongside common files like models.py and views.py in the Django project. Now I want to go back to the Django documentation on writing and running tests. And as we noted in the previous video, Django unit tests, they use the standard library module unit test. And Django's test case is a subclass of unit test .test case here. And we can create our own test classes by subclassing the Django test case. Now if you're wondering what the differences are between test case and the class provided by unit test, we're going to cover a lot of that later on, but one of them is noted here on this line that we have above the code. Django's test case class is going to run each test inside a database transaction and that provides isolation for the test case. So that's not something that unit test is going to do, but that's one example of an augmentation of the Django test case class. 
And if we actually look at this example here, you can see the concepts that we showed in the previous video on the unit test module. For example, a setup method to consolidate repeated logic that you need in your test case methods. And we also have methods that begin with test underscore, and that's where you actually test the logic of your application or integrated logic across different components. The same methods are available. As you can see, we have self.assert equal to check some conditions in the application. So everything that we showed in the previous video is applicable here to the Django test case class. Now we don't actually have any tests, of course, at the moment because we've just created this Django project and this Django application. But if we go to the right hand side, there's a section here on running the tests that you have in a Django project. So once you've written the tests, you can run them using manage.py test. And just like the start app command and other commands like run server, this is a command that's available in all Django projects as part of the manage.py utility. And test discovery works the same as with the unit test module in Python. So by default, it's going to discover tests in any file that starts with test. So test underscore models, for example, or test underscore views. We're going to create these files later in the series. And the Django test runner is automatically going to be able to discover those tests. Now, I just want to show this command at the moment. So let's go back to VS Code. And I'm going to minimize the sidebar here. And let's bring the terminal up to the top. So we're going to run a command. And it's going to be python manage.py test. Now, you can see the output of this command. We've not found any tests, so it's not run any tests at all because, of course, we don't have any at the moment. But that's how simple it is to run the Django test runner. We just have this simple command, python manage.py test. And if you run that, it's going to discover and run all of the tests in your Django project. Now, you can run a subset of these tests. For example, we have an application that we just created called products, and that is the only app in the project at the moment. But you can pass individual applications to the test command if you want to run a subset of tests only from those particular applications. Now one thing that I like to do if we bring back the sidebar here, within my Django applications such as projects I often create a tests directory and then within the test directory I have tests for individual components within the Django project, for example testing models or testing views or forms and so on. So I would create a file with test at the start of the file name, for example test underscore models or test underscore forms. And that's useful for larger Django applications within a project where you're writing a lot of tests. So rather than having a single test.py file that contains loads of code, you can split those into different files and put all of your tests within a tests directory in the application. We're going to see an example of that later on, but that's more just a point about structuring tests. And the way that you do this is often down to the preference of the individual developer. But that's just a note on the way I like to do things. What we're going to do now is look at how Django manages the database during tests. Now, again, I want to reference the Django documentation on this topic. And if we go back to the sidebar here, there is a section on the test database. So when we run tests, what happens here is that Django is going to create a dedicated test database. It's not going to use the real production database that you're using with your actual users. Instead, it's going to create a test database. And regardless of whether your tests pass or fail, these test databases are destroyed when all of the tests have been executed. And this will apply to tests that require a database. So if you have a test case class like this one here that's automatically imported, if you're subclassing that, that's automatically going to create that test database. And remember earlier, this test case is going to create database transactions for individual tests under the hood. So that's a class that does require access to the database. And the default test database names are created by prepending test underscore to the value of each name in the database's setting. Now, if we go back to the Django project and look at settings.py, remember we've seen installed apps, but if we scroll down a little bit further, we have this databases setting. And you specify a dictionary here, and the key at the top level is for each database that you want to connect to in your Django project. And what's going to happen here when Django runs the test command is it's going to prepend test to each name and it's going to create a database with the given test name. So in this case, the default database in the project will be given the name test underscore default and that will be destroyed at the end of the test session. So let's change that back to default, but that's what's going to happen under the hood as it notes here in the documentation. And the benefit, of course, of not using your production database is that you're not going to mess with any of the real data that's in that database and you're not going to risk 
affecting or corrupting your user data. And that's of course not what you want to do when you run these tests. You want to run the tests in an isolated environment and that includes the database itself. You don't want to affect your real application data. And one final thing that I want to note in this video, if we go back to this paragraph here, we've already noted that the test database will just have test underscore prepended to each name in the database's setting. But notice this line here that when you use SQL Lite, the tests will actually use an in-memory database by default. And that's a database that's just created in memory and it's bypassing the file system entirely. So if you have a lot of tests, that's going to improve the speed and performance of those tests by just doing everything in memory, as opposed to creating that test database on the file system. And finally, the test dictionary in the database's setting, that offers a number of settings that you can use to configure the test database. So if you want to use a different database name, you can specify name in the test dictionary for any given database in your database's setting. Let's scroll through to that and we're gonna see an example of this. So we have a default database here that was using PostgreSQL and we have the test key here and that maps to another dictionary where you can override settings specifically for your test database. So that's an introduction to some of the utilities that are provided out of the box by Django when it comes to testing. In the next video, we're going to start writing some code and we're going to create some Django model classes. And for those models, we're going to write some unit tests to test the functionality of model properties and methods. And we're also going to see some additional utilities that are provided by Django test case subclasses, as well as the unit test Python package. And we're also going to see how to handle exceptions that might happen and errors that might occur in your code. So that's coming up in the next video.